Hello and welcome to Healing from Within. I am your host, Cheryl Glick, author of The Living Spirit, which shares stories of spiritual awakening, spiritual communication, healing energies, and miracles. And today I am delighted to welcome Ray Brooks, author of The Shadow That Seeks the Sun, to share his amazing awareness of what lies within each of us and which, in one way or another, we seek to remember as we explore both the physical and energetic qualities of our life. Hello, Ray, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You've, you've really put it over well there. And thank you for reading the book. I really appreciate that. Oh, I enjoyed it as we were just discussing before the show. A unique oh, viewpoint and a, a unique life journey. Uh, Ray, as listeners of Healing from Within are well aware, my wonderful guests and I share our intimate and telling stories of life as many have believed it to be. And they're awakened uh-huh. as they have believed it to be. And yes. they're awakening or opening up to the truth of a splendid new reality as multidimensional uh-huh. beings of energy and expansion. And then we go Vibrant. further. Yes. And we yeah. go, we even go further to discover <laughs> through self investigation. We are very much more than we appear to be, and life is in one regard a journey of remembrance and finding peace in the joy of simply being. In today's, oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you. In today's <laughs> episode of Healing from Within, Ray Brooks, a British author and public speaker on the subject of non-duality, will share oh. his uh, there's a lot of confusion between duality and non-duality. We're going to talk about that. We'll share. We'll his, try and put that right. <laughs> mm-hmm, we'll share his direct experience of the natural state through simple self-inquiry. Ray is also the author of Blowing Zen, Finding an Authentic Life, and a musician and recording artist internationally oh. respected in the world of shaka. Shakuhachi music. Shakuhachi, you've, you've pronounced it absolutely correctly. Thank you. I, Which I, is a, a Japanese flute. Yes, well, I'm a Japanese Reiki master teacher. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> and I drive a Japanese car, so we'll laugh at oh. that. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> it flowed off my, my tongue very naturally and like music. Ray, I always love to ask my guests to think back to childhood and remember. Oh, yes. Yeah, we like to, we don't do this often enough, but it's a nice thing to do. And remember a person, place, or event that might be meaningful to them and might have signaled to them or the people around them what their life calling or purpose might blossom into. You know, it feels like and it seems like within us is a plan or program we are born with and a guide to our future interests and experience. There's definitely something in that. Yes, that's mm. for sure. Um, I was born in England in a place called Newcastle. And I was brought up by my grandmother from the ages, from from when I was born until the age of 16. When I was about 13, maybe younger than that, maybe 10, I started knowing, uh, seeing that my grandmother was a bit strange. Remember, in those days, I didn't know anything about Alzheimer's or dementia. Anyway, Mm. my poor grandmother developed dementia. And I was brought up by her for four years, and she often forgot my name, and um, we had fun, but it was was tough. It was a tough time. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, When when I was 16, she she passed away, and I was taken down to London by my mother, who lived down there. And that's why I'm sitting here now, I guess, because of that one happening. Well, but it was a, a, a very, very interesting time. I'm sure you developed a great deal of compassion oh, yeah. in, in watching yeah. someone you loved who cared for you change in oh, the way she did. I don't know what would have happened, with how it would have turned out without my, you know, grandmother. my grandmother's love. You know, I think we, only, we need just maybe one. We're lucky enough to have just one person who loves us in our life. Absolutely. That's all we need. Yeah, That's all yeah. we need. And now, there's so many... Who don't, don't even have that. that. There are so many people yeah. who don't even have that. Mm. 
but but yeah. that's a that's a, that was necessary in your case. It was your destiny. It was your plan. And your grandmother was oh. exactly the way she needed to mm. be to mm. be a teacher and a guide for you to develop. Oh, yeah. And maybe I that's... just wish I'd been kinder to her. <laughs> I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. you were. No, she I... brought up seven children before me, and she said that I was the most difficult. But she was. She by the time I left, by the time she passed on, she she had forgotten my name, and she she didn't call me Ray or Raymond. She just called me Bonnie Lad. Sometimes she even locked me out of the house, and she didn't well, even know who I was at all. Ray, let me tell you something. I do readings mm. for people, and one day I, I, I had a woman, a nurse, who sent me her daughter yeah. who was at, ha, had anxiety and was going off to college. And when I was doing the Reiki healing over her body, I heard this song, and I said to her, I'm hearing this song and she started to cry, and she said, well, my grandmother, who has Alzheimer's, sang that oh. to me when I was a child. And I oh. said and I said to her, her grandmother was still alive, but she didn't recognize anyone in the family, and they were all so sad. I said, well, her soul is fully intact, and her memories and her love for you are fully intact, and she is sending this to take this message home to your mother who, uh, you know, takes care of her most of the time so that you can know that she is the same mm. person she always was. The brain may not be functioning. That's the physical end of, of life. But her soul and her spirit and her energy and all her memories are intact. And Love I just, never die. I, yes, I just thought I would yeah. tell you that because of the story you told mm. that she came to my mind. That's, yeah. And I yeah. thought I would tell you that. But let's go on to, yeah. I believe you tell a story of an encounter with an Anglo-Indian man on the Ghats of the sacred river Ganges. That's and, correct, yes. And, and His name was Rudra. Yes, and, and what brought you there? And tell us about the some of the nine conversations for wholeness that it illuminated a true awareness of soul being for you. Well... What brought me, what took me to India, and I've been going there with my wife, who's the co-author of this book. We've been going there for 40 years. Uh, why we started going there in the first place? Um, the first time we went was more or less just as a tourist, just visiting. And then I fell in love with the place, and then started to go back every year. In fact, I just got back only a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had seen other spiritual teachers before Rudra. I met Krishnamurti in Ojai. Um, the journey, I guess, started in London, where I was completely lost, but uh, very popular with my friends and drinking and doing all the things that young Oh, that's do. right. In the chapter, <laughs> Awakening to the Dream. You tell Awakening of, to the Dream. I love yeah, that. Yeah, you tell I, of an experience yeah. that brought that change to your life and how it led you yeah. to discover the Indian mm. teacher named mm. Krishna Muerte. Krishna Murti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, lived tell in, us. He, he lived in He lived. Well, I was in a... Um, tell us that story with your friends. Well, I was in London and I was definitely lost. And uh, my mates were telling, my friends were telling me to, you know, you're just not drinking enough. But they were making fun of me and mm. saying that I was having an existential uh, crisis. But I just didn't, I, although I was the life and soul of the party, I just didn't fit in. And I started searching the bookshops and to see if anybody else knew about this experience I'd had in a nightclub in India, in, in uh, London. Um, the nightclub was, it was, it was late at night and I had been to the pub and I had had a couple of drinks. But it was no more than usual. But I had been working hard doing nights in, in the vaults of the Bank of England. So I was exhausted. But when I got into the nightclub, I was talking to someone. And I think quite a few people have had this experience where everything goes quiet and, and your awareness is, is accentuated. And there's a, a vibrancy in the moment. I didn't know what it was, and I left the nightclub, and I walked into down Oxford Street into Hyde Park and sat there. And it was that moment I knew that there had to be more than the way I was living. There had to be more to life. And the next day, 
after I, I walked home, the next day, I woke up and it had gone. And I spent, I, I spent months trying to find out what this experience was. And one of the places I went to was a bookshop called Watkins. And this is where I found a book on Krishnamurti. Now that was maybe 40, that was in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. Watkins are the publishers that took this book on. I don't know how it works. Maybe you do. <laughs> Watkins were the publishers 40 or 50 years later that took this book on. That took your book? Yeah. Yeah. And I went in there, that was the the place I went in there to find a book to see what this experience well, was all about. That's synchronicity. And the name oh, of man. and the name of the club yeah. that you had this experience in was called Samanthers. And that's it my was indeed. first granddaughter's name. You see, oh. we're all connected with synchronicity yeah. and nothing yeah. is random. Life is an interconnected oh. uh, chain of our remembering ourselves. Mm. But uh, you wrote in your book after having the experience that you had, which was an awakening, which was a, a connection to your soul energy trying yeah. to remind it you who you were. Even if it was exhaustion, whatever it was. It doesn't it, it, matter how it happens. Yeah. It happens Absolutely. in the way and time and events it's supposed to. But you wrote, they were good at managing their anxiety and fear and definitely did not want anything to upset the status quo. It was as if they were all sleepwalking from hangover to hangover. I was questioning the way I was living. We all oh. have a time in life where the physical is very important to us because we have expectations for ourselves, and our family had expectations for us, and we lose this connection to our inner in, intuition or wisdom, and we suffer as a result because we're not really following uh, what is right for us. We're just sort of emerged in all yeah. the nonsense of physical living. So um, you also wrote... Well, no, actually, Krishna Murti wrote yes. this, oh, yeah. and 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 beautiful. you wrote this, and it's beautiful. The world lies in yourself, and if you know how to look, oh. the key is in your hands. Nobody, oh. no guru, no teacher or practice could give either the key or the door to open except yourself, and there is the truth. People oh, think they have yeah. to be in this group, they have to go to this church, temple, whatever, read this oh, book or that, yes. but. But the, but we come to know in time that that is exactly the truth. And, you know, I remember back when I was mm -hmm. having my own spiritual awakening, and mm -hmm. I I was aware of the state that you're talking about. I yes. I was actually driving in the car, and it opened up my whole chest opened up, and I felt so full of joy and light and quietness. Oh. I was so excited that I told a rabbi. One of the women, oh. one of the women I worked with, she was married to a rabbi, and I told him what was happening, and he said to me, "You have to take a Torah class." <laughs> Not being particularly particularly religious, I responded yes. uh, that my way or my path to the truth of being and to a God of universal energy was okay for me, and a personal connection needed to be made. I needed to do it myself and he yeah. he upset me very much at that point when he didn't like how I was discovering my intuition and my connection to spirit eventually becoming um, an intuitive healer oh, and, yeah. and, and I felt very bad yeah. about that at the time so your story reminded me that now let's go on you tell of the story when you went from London all the way to California to hear him speak you were I mean, yeah. that was a far distance yeah. to go, but something yeah. moved in you. Something was driving me, yeah. Yes, you know, yeah. Where, where I was stuck, and where I was stuck even after Krishnamurti, was believing that it was the body that was awareness, even though I'd read that, you know, that the body is just the body. But I, I, I'd read it all, I'd, but I still... It didn't mean anything my, to you yet. It didn't mean anything, mm -hmm. because I had great knowledge, but just knowledge from the book and I, I thought the body and the mind were the awareness not that the body and the mind were appearing in this 
vibrancy, this, this shining vibrancy that cannot be missed. So that's where I was stuck when I went to see Krishnamurti. And even though he told me that's not how it is. It wasn't yet your time to incorporate fully into your soul. I know. It takes time. There was another quote from him uh, that was uh, very telling. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what background you come from, no matter what state of mind you're in, you can still clearly look and see what is actually going on. But the observation which is from the soul, has to be choiceless and unconditional. You know, I've learned to say it in a different way. It seems to me, I say it this way, allow, accept, and surrender, and know all is as it is supposed to be. You know, he said, I don't Mm. mind what happens. (laughs) And Mm. when you learn to do that, you learn to be at Mm. peace because you accept everything. And in my book, The Living Spirit, I said it's something along these lines. Life is The Living about... Spirit, what a beautiful name. That is such a beautiful name. Thank you. So in yeah. my book, I said it this way. <laughs> Life is about loving what is, which is never perfect, just in a state of conscious change. Mm. If we forget mm. about perfection and just be, we will find love, peace, and freedom in our journey. Everything is perfect for self-discovery, which is your journey, and my journey, and everybody's right. journey, yeah. right. There is yeah. no normal or abnormal and no one way to live or love or develop your own personal no. path to truly knowing who and what we are. Ah, oh, beautiful. And you I know when Krishnamurti said you can look from any place, anywhere you find yourself, and mm. that means even in the depths of depression, you can look, just look and see that there is something that you know this depression how can you be this depression when, you, when, when it's known? There's a knowing of it. That's a clue. That's a start. And to know that you're a prisoner, a prisoner of this body-mind system, it's a start. It's a that's b- the whole thing, I think. Brilliant. <laughs> to know you're a Thanks. prisoner of the world. But not, not, I, don't, yeah. I don't like to look at it as being a prisoner of the world. Okay. Yeah. I think the world mm-hmm. and nature and people and relationships have right. great beauty. But yes, there's also great pain if we flow in our ego reality and we forget our soul reality, which is magnificent and which is connected to all that. That is, then then we're confused. And that you talk about that non-duality, yes. getting beyond. That's non-duality: the ego, the soul, rich, poor, right, wrong, good, bad. That's the duality that brings us back to the middle. And what is the middle? And there's the truth. What is the middle? We, re- we return back to our own completeness there and then, just looking at this. It, 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 it stops us and we immediately return to our own completeness. Which Ab- is, absolutely. Which is the reality of it. Which is mm. what, what you discovered after the books and after the travels and after your oh, own books, intense... Yeah, I did it too. I've read thousands of books. I've, oh, interv- I've know, interviewed in the, so it, many people. I always... It, in, I enjoy it so much because I learn yeah. always something new, yeah. and it delights me because then I smile within, delighted at the way another person expresses the same truth, and it's beautiful. It's a I can tr- hear it in your voice. I can mm-hmm. hear the smile in your voice. Yeah. You know, we, we, we want to become what we already are. I love that. I love the idea that, uh, of, that we, what we're looking for is already fully present. Mm. It's just overlooked. Yeah, I think that's as incredible. a three. When I was three years old, I remember this clearly. I was on the grass in the Catskill Mountains at a bungalow colony, and I was laying on the ground and I was looking up and I was crying and I said, "Why did you drop me in this place?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did that mean? What could a three-year-old? Who was I talking to? Was it my soul crying out? to know uh, uh, what to do in this place because I remembered another place. I remember it clearly, and my mother took a picture. I don't have that picture anymore, but she used to show it to me. (laughs) And I remembered what I said. I've never met anybody that isn't looking for peace and happiness in all of my travels, all of them. But we are peace and happiness. We already or oh, yes. peace and happiness. Yes. We yes. just don't but know Maybe it. that takes a while, you know. I mean, I was looking for peace and happiness in nightclubs and bars and mm. friends and girlfriends. 
Call right. everything. All of and, us do that. Mm. Yeah. And it's but let's going go on. on. Because I'd like yes. to hear how you describe this. You and your wife, since you've spent so much time in the foothills of the Indian Himalayas. Oh, <laughs> yes. I haven't been there. Tell us of that place and the people and how it has all been a great gift to you. Well, we go to two places in the Himalayas. Um, one is on the banks of the River Ganges, and the other is higher up in a place called Almora and the in Almora, there's a ridge called Cranks Ridge, and it's famous for having all these visits from the peak generation, Timothy Leary and Allen Ginsberg, and even Krishnamurti went there. So we go to this place where they say there's tremendous energy field there. So that, that has been our attraction for about 40 years, going there and going to Rishikesh. And uh, your listeners may have not heard of Rishikesh, but if they remember, some of them might remember, that the Beatles went to Rishikesh in 1968, I believe. Mm, I didn't and know went, that. Yeah, they went there and they studied with the Maharishi Yogi. And the ashram is still there. It's closed now, but it's still there. And uh, uh, I think it was Paul and George stayed on and the other two left. I think oh, musicians... Oh, I know two of them stayed. Yeah, I think mu many musicians and artists have a way of connecting to the inspiration of universal energy because the language of spirit, I'm an intuitive, so I get mm -hmm. messages to help people. They're always very poetic and musical and, and beautiful, and it's a different language. And I, I, I think you studied and performed... Uh, Shaku Hachi music. Hachi, yeah, well so, done. <laughs> and, and why did you, why were you drawn to that? Well, I lived in Japan for a while, and um, I was at a Zen temple for a two-day two -day meditation course before I, you know, just to get away into the temples for a weekend in Tokyo. And in one of our break times, I heard the Shaku Hachi playing in the garden. And I went over and asked the man about it, and he told me, and I fell in love with it there and then. And I studied with the masters over there. I studied for seven years. I studied this flute. I fell in love with it. But like most things, like a lot of that's fallen away now. I don't play now. That's all I'm right. I'm so in love with this. I just, you know, you'll have found this out in your own life. Many things fall away. We don't have to surrender to them or give them up. They just not interesting anymore. Yes. Like, there's so much dropped away. You know, the body-mind seems to, it realigns with this new understanding. Yes, you also there's, there's absorb the energy you needed from the music, the awakening of your mm. soul and spirit and yes. the beauty of mm -hmm. yourself and life. And, and once, you don't have to stay with something forever and ever. Relationships are like that too. People feel mm -hmm. so sad. Uh, I've had mm -hmm. many clients who are so sad when a relationship changes or ends. And I always say mm -hmm. every relationship lasts as long as it must. And then there are it new, runs its course, yes. Right, and new and yeah. new experience to continue the journey of our soul maturation. So there's nothing ever lost. There's only new. I don't want to use the word experience again. I, there's o only new love and compassion and beauty mm. to find within ourselves. So what would you say was the thread behind the nine lessons you had with Rudra? During your talks with him? The most meaningful would be that, well, at first, that he pointed out what true nature is, rather than, and that's not the end of the journey. I mean, if you know that you're aware, if there's awareness, and you know that things come and go from awareness, mm. you can see that awareness is your true nature. But it's the beginning, it's not the end, if there is such a thing as a beginning. There is no end. True that's right, there's no end. It's not that, oh, hey, I found my true nature and I'm done. It's 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 just it, it, it's opened up to this this new understanding is is opened up to it's to the beauty of life and there's no more. F one thing that I got from it is there's no fear of life now. I'm mm -hmm. not separate. It's not something out there that I'm fighting. It is something that I am. That Christian Burke could put it better. I am the world. 
Yes. I think that's one of the, the universe the is that. within us, and we are within the universe. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's all one. We never left there. Even as we're having this physical life, our mm-hmm. soul energy is still yeah. around, above, he, with us. Yeah. yeah. I think he said, you as awareness or simply the knowing of yourself as everything. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, it, it's true. At first, we see it that we, you as awareness, mm. see things, see objects come and go. And yes. we, we, we move away from this a little early, but we see that we are awareness. And it never changes, but everything else changes. Sometimes we are sad or happy or depressed or... It, things come and go, but what it takes place in never comes and goes. Things come and, and go, be, maybe things come and go because we think there's separation. That's exactly right. But there's it's no still, separation. That's it. There is, that's the subtle duality. It's still a wonderful place to get to. I don't know if we can move on without finding out that we are this awareness. And then we can move on to see that there is no separation between an inside and an outside a me and a world, or spirit and other. And this is, this is one of the main lessons, if you like to put, that I got from Yes, it is. And you also wrote, you, uh, Y-O-U, you, you, are another name yeah. for oneness. You have never not have been oneness, and oneness has no dimension or location. It is all there is. And that's what I was trying oh, to say before. Brilliant. We haven't yeah. left the place of our beginning. Yeah. We are creation, yeah. and we are just exploring wherever we are. We are still always that one. This, uh, it's, I want to yeah. thank you. I really want to thank you, Ray Brooke, and your wife, Diane, for your tremendous willingness to know freedom and to know oh. life in its uniqueness and unity and oneness without separation and in its simplicity to be able to enjoy experience mm-hmm. as the true gauge of all that is. You oh. have shared your travels to many oh. fabulous places where you engaged with wonderful, colorful characters and their awareness of self, helping you to love yourself and life more fully. There's nothing more beautiful. You, you have had the gift of life. There's nothing to fear about death we we are we are simply the soul being always and forever for more information and to purchase this book the shadow that seeks the sun to find yourself as you already are go to raybrooks.org in summarizing today's episode of healing from within we begin to see that it is possible to view life and to see yourself as you are, if only we can allow ourselves to be open to the forces of this creative process of mind, body, and spirit that allows us to find the greatest awareness of consciousness and being and to look beyond thought to be one with ourselves and all life. Rudra told Ray, all we are doing here, Ray, is pointing to the real which you alone are. The real is always real. Gold, no matter what it appears as, is never anything other than gold. Whether the gold takes on the appearance of a ring or statue, uh, those apparent objects only ever appear as gold and only seemingly came into existence. The ring or statue is only an appearance. Only the gold exists. There is only ever gold. There is only ever you. And I would assume oh. we're using gold as a metaphor for consciousness. Ray, Diane, and I would have you know in actuality, there is beyond all the perceptions of mind and physical reality and the fears and limits of our ego, the oneness and openness of our being, which in essence is our soul remembrance of the consciousness where we came from, and ultimately never left, and of life or eternal energy. And that is our birthright. I am Cheryl Glick, host of Healing from Within, and invite you to visit my website, CherylGlick.com, to hear and read about explorers in the metaphysical fields of science, spirituality, psychology, the creative arts and music that offer us insights into all that is, was, and will be. Shows can also be heard on webtalkradio.net 
and DreamVisions7Radio.com. Thank you for listening.